What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about Palantir and how their shares got absolutely pummeled today and fell 7.64%. They're up about 11 cents, 0.43% after hours, but this is still a very poor day for this company as a whole. And I'm going to explain to you a couple of reasons why this might have happened, especially today. Now, before we get into all of that information, if you guys enjoy this video that I made for you guys today, please go down and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so you're never late on any one of these new videos that I put out and you can stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks and maybe even learn about a couple of new ones. In order to figure out why this might have happened today, there's a couple of things that we need to look at in order to figure out the exact reasons. Now, the first thing that I would look for is news. Now, I was looking all day and there was really no big news article that would send Palantir falling down this much. And then you can think about, well, what time of year it is. Now, this is going to be very important. So the date today is December 28th. And we can see that over the past six months of Palantir being a publicly traded company, it came out at around $10, dropped down to 9 and went all the way up to $29.30 and is now trading at $25. Now, why is this important? So a lot of institutions own massive chunks of this company, and usually they try to keep a balanced portfolio. If a company runs up this much, it's great for these companies, for these institutions, because they've made a bunch of money, but they need to take profits at the end of the year. So in order to figure out if Palantir has a really high institutional ownership, you can either go on a Bloomberg terminal, which some of you may have access to, especially if you live on a college campus. I know you're on break right now, but if you have access to a Bloomberg terminal, you can figure out the institutional ownership and when people buy and sell by using a Bloomberg terminal, or you can go over to Yahoo Finance and they compile together the top institutional owners of these companies. Now we can see when we look at Palantir's institutional ownership, we can see that BlackRock, a massive investment firm, owns about 30 million shares of Palantir. And this position is worth about $278 million. And the date reported was September 29th. So it's safe to assume that BlackRock has not sold out of their entire position. We can always see that Soros Fund Management, that's going to be George Soros, also owns a massive chunk. Bailey Gifford also owns a massive chunk of this. They also own a massive chunk of NEO. We can also go down and see that Mutual Funds, the BlackRock Capital Appreciation Fund, Voya, and Bright House also own large institutional ownership of this company. Now, these companies are all going to have to take some sort of profits at the end of 2020 in order to rebalance their portfolios. December 28th is really close to the end of the year, and that is part of the reason why Palantir had such a big fall today. Now, the second reason why Palantir might have had such a massive fall today is that the share lockup period is expiring pretty soon. Now, it's not as soon as one might think that would have a very large impact on the share price, but it's soon enough where people might start to get a little bit worried. Now, according to Business Wire, the lockup period is expected to continue until the start of the third trading day following the date of the public disclosure of Palantir's financial results for the year ending December 31st, 2020. Now, essentially what this means is that after the next earnings, Palantir uh, shareholders, the people who were the C-suite, the original investors, high-level employees who have been granted shares will be able to sell their shares on the open market. Now, this lockup period is very important because a lot of the IPOs have these lockup periods in order for not to have a massive amount of volatility on IPO day. If people were allowed to sell their pre-IPO shares on IPO day, they would create such a massive volatility in the underlying stock price and the supply of shares would way outweigh the demand and it would send the stock price falling. Now, if we go back and take a look at the share price of Palantir and look at the chart, 
they really ripped up because of all of the good news they've been having this year, and they've been having an incredible 2020. They've been able to generate $175 million worth of government contracts just in this year alone. And it has been said that government contracts only make up about 50% of Palantir's yearly revenue. So this is a relatively new company that's been publicly traded for not that much time. And they've been able to take a massive market share of the data analytics sector and predictive analytics. If we go over, we can take a look at some of the deals that they have signed with the government, especially the United States government. That's where the majority of these contracts have come from and one from the United Kingdom. Right here, the Army Vantage reaffirms the Palantir partnership with a $114 million agreement. Now, we can see that in December 2019, the U.S. Army selected Palantir and awarded them a $458 million production agreement to power this program. Originally, it was for one base year and three option years. And the Army loved this service that Palantir provided them so much that they decided to exercise the next year of the contract and give them an additional $115 million. Now, this is really good news for investors since if the United States government has a lot of faith in Palantir to handle their data and give the really simple solutions and really effective problem-solving abilities, then investors should have a lot of confidence in them as well. Now, the next one is going to be the FDA contract, and this was from the FDA Center for Drug Evaluation and Research in the Oncology. Center of Excellence to provide possible pandemic treatments and approve drugs. Now, this is going to be another really important one. This one was $44 million, and this was really helpful, especially for Operation Warp Speed and handling the pandemic. Now, the next one that we're going to be discussing is the UK. This one was basically just a $31.5 million deal to help with the rolling out of the vaccine and to detect emerging hotspots of the virus and determine the critical equipment that is supplied to the facilities with the greatest need. So essentially what that is, is that as we saw in New York, a lot of the hospitals have been overrun with people and have had a shortage of equipment. So essentially what the Palantir data platform is going to do, it's going to model the flow of people coming into the hospitals and equipment traveling to and from the hospitals and determine the best and most efficient way to allocate those resources and where to send the patients. Overall, if you're a long-term investor in Palantir and you've held this company for a long time, a 7% drop, 7.5% drop does hurt, but I don't think it's really anything to be super concerned about. This company is getting new government contracts almost every week, and they, their share price has been reflecting that all throughout the year. I think Palantir has the potential to be the most successful data analytics and predictive analytics company, and they're going to really change the world in terms of how companies and governments analyze data. Now, you can see that as a positive or negative thing in terms of what maybe your political beliefs are or how cynical you are. But in general, it's going to be really good for this company. And I think this is just the beginning on how far this company can run. As we saw, it basically tripled in the first two and a half, three months that it was publicly traded. And a little healthy pullback is always fine if you're trying to get in for the long term. I wouldn't say that buying options on this company right now is the best idea unless you're going to buy slightly out of the money leaps or in the money leaps to gain more leverage. That's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed what I had to say, please leave a comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.